funds. Now I request sir to kindly address the badge. Any idea? Uh, any representative here for the first year? No, I mean you you're not even started your classes, right? Yes, sir. Good. Good. So this was through CAT, right? CAT entrance exam mostly. Okay, okay, okay. I will just start with a small story. I mean, yeah, my brief that she gave, I guess it was from LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah, little here and there, but yeah, mostly close. Uh, you know that uh, there are few words in English which are inspired or taken directly from the names of the people. Do you know anything about that? There are few words in English. Any any word you know in English which probably was the name of a guy or something like that? Pardon me? What is that? To do something. Okay. Okay, okay, that's something else. Okay, that's not what I meant, but is there any, any other word actually? Any other word that you have heard about and probably that has been taken from, yeah, good. Epicurean. Okay, what is that? Uh, so a person who uh, thinks, uh, who uh, wants to enjoy his life. <coughs> good. And uh, one hmm. more, uh, Confucius. Okay, what's your name? So Divya Singh. Okay, good, good. Thank you. Sir. Uh, have you heard about a word called Martinet? Martinet? What is that? What does that mean? Okay, who said yes? What is Martinet? Martinet actually, yeah, Martinet means strict. It means strict, but it has been taken from uh, there was a guy who was like he was an officer in military and he was very strict and he embodied embodied all those characters of strictness that's why that word has been actually taken from his name and actually what whoever is like very strict he is called martinet on the same lines can anyone tell me the meaning of word kasanawa does that ring any anything in your minds yeah what does that mean yeah you that specs yeah you said this right what is kasanawa Sir, I didn't remember that much, but a little bit in the movies, it's a Casanova. Okay. Uh, Whose movie was that? Uh, sir, Deja Vu. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, I think it means uh, uh, just like Nirvana. Sorry, no. Anyone else? Who? Anyone more else? Yeah. Can you can you can you please give us a mic? Yeah. Can, uh, we can say that uh, flirtatious in nature, a person. Fantastic. Good. Nice. Nice. Very good. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. Casino okay, so was a guy uh, who was engaged with many girls because mm -hmm. he was traveling around the world and, like, he wants to stay in a village. So he he was he was a guy. Real, like his name was Casanova, and. From that, the term called Casanova came Fantastic. into that English. What you said is perfect, and what you said is like, I mean, that was that is exactly what I meant. Casanova is a person who has got many lovers, and Casanova, as uh, as he rightly mentioned, he was a person. He was he was actually European, I guess, Italian. He was like born in Italy, Venice, probably, and he travelled world over. He is. Yeah, he is one of the most renowned travelers and although uh, now you know what is the meaning of the word Casanova and you know what he is known for 
but he has like many attributes to him i mean he is known to the world because of his flirtatious behavior and it all came to the light he was i guess in 17th 18th century 1790s type so he wrote his autobiography and he wrote everything about his whatever i mean his affairs and everything he mentioned all the all those in the in, in his autobiography actually that manuscript of that biography was actually i, I guess sold for 10 million dollars or something so okay it didn't really acquire that kind of fame back then but when it came to the light in 1960s it was like now everybody knows what casanova is so now the reason why i'm telling you this story casanova now as you rightly know he was like one of the popular guys in his time everybody would like to be casanova obviously so most of the people he had encounters with royalty everything i mean in a hierarchy with everyone probably so he, when he was on his deathbed he, he when he was about to die in probably 1794 something like that a reporter came to him and uh, asked him how did you manage to have so many affairs simple question i mean there was like it was entire interview and in the interview one of the questions one of the most important important question was how did you manage to have so many affairs in this lifetime his answer was very simple he said i just asked i hope you understood i just asked manasi pucha man me fakt vicharlo whatever in in three different languages i hope you got the meaning my message is very clear you won't know unless and until you ask there are only two two types of people who are, who don't ask questions they are somebody one who understands everything or who understood everything or somebody who one somebody who didn't understand anything at all and most of us probably lie somewhere in between right so the point is ask questions ask whenever you feel like you like somebody you won't know unless i mean whether she she is going to say yes or no unless until you go and ask her on the same line this is like okay this is like okay you don't really expect this kind of an analogy or this kind of an example from finance background or hardcore finance background but i just thought i should let it up and i i'm sure i mean most of you are not really aware about how is it going to be an mba and i didn't want to make it very hardcore or hardcore mba mba or finance type of talk but i just thought i should start with something this is going to help you in your careers in your mba these are like these are the two most important years that you have got now to step up your personality and once you are, once you actually once you are like okay and this is going to be the one of the most important ingredient you have to you have, you have to ask man i mean if the first question that you have to ask is which, which are the companies that visit the campus which are the companies that visit the campus i mean okay which is the kind of profile that suits me the best and unless and until you ask these questions you won't really know the answer i mean they like you know how many people are doing mbas these days how many colleges are there so it's 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 a, it's, a, it's a tough competition out there and it's it's a that is it has become a that is so you got to ask yourself asking there can be two types of ask again one could be ask the one that we talked about casino one or probably you are a sales guy you are sitting in a ssa bank and you are you are probably selling insurance some guy walks in walks in the branch and you are confused whether to ask him whether he will buy my product or not you will know the answer unless you you will know the answer him whether you are going to buy my product or not so the point is it's not about having outward personality or very outgoing personality it's about okay you know what what do you want you how to check whether this guy is going to buy my insurance or not so the first thing that you have to do is okay i have to ask him now there can be various ways of asking you can devise your formulas you can have your ways of asking him but the first question is you have to ask him <coughs> ask just open up guys that's 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 what the message was this is it now or oh, this is like the okay this can be very simplistic asking but second can be i call it internal ask i mean i just i just thinking about okay i have to address this guys like some hundred odd guys full of dreams and 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 like okay couple of years down the line they will be joining the corporate worlds and they they probably have questions about okay which kind of profile suits me the best so now it's about also doing the introspection i mean the second kind of ask i will be like internal ask you have to ask yourself what am i doing now why did i join this particular big school what is the reason i mean okay they they offer 100% placement fantastic okay which are the companies that come to the campus i will go to manoj i will speak with him I, because i have asked questions to myself okay what am i going to do after 2 years i'll go to manoj i will speak with him and i will ask him okay what are the companies that are that that i mean if how many of you want to go for finance i mean sorry for side you guys i think i'm going for wow most of them you are already in finance man <laughs> 
Okay, so you are thinking of getting into finance, right? And which, I mean, any idea? I mean, does anyone have any background in the sense that relatives or friends are in finance? No one. So how, how will you know about finance then? What are the profiles offered in finance? How will you know about finance? If you are nobody in finance, already working in, in, in this, I mean, no vice president or no director or no whatever. So how will you know about that? You got to ask. You talk with your seniors, ask them questions. and. You should ask so many questions that they should be like, well, now go, man, let me work on my stuff. I mean, it should be that. So unless and until you are not sure about what are you doing, you should be asking questions. This is the second internal ask that I'm actually proposing. You should be doing that. So this is it. I hope this was clear. Back in that corner. Can you hear me? That lady in the corner. I, couldn't, I didn't know that there is a lady. I just knew that there is somebody. Can you hear me? Can you see me there? Do you want to sit on the front? No. Oh, you are second year girl, right? So she's first year. Okay, we, what did you talk about now? So you... So you were talking about what are the profiles offered in finance? No. So you, you were talking about what are the profiles offered in finance? No, I was not talking about that. I was asking you guys that. I, I didn't really talk about the profiles that are offered. I don't really know what are the profiles offered. So any idea? I mean, any example that we talked about at the start? Looks like you have figured, you have everything figured out out there. Yeah. You are that finance, are you, do, you, do you want to sit on this side? Is there any seat here? No. Okay, should be fine then. I will ask you another question. Huh? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. Now the question is, now the question is, why are they asking questions? Why the hell? I mean, okay man, I mean you must be like more than 20, 22 years. I mean you must be like 22 years old, most of them, almost 20. So you had like fun filled 22 years of your age. You never asked yourself questions. It was like, okay, you, you were just chugging along. Your, your dad said you should do engineering, you did your engineering. That's how it was for me actually. Then you are, somebody said, my elder brother said that you should do MBA, I did my MBA, okay, that's, that's the way it was. I never asked myself, what, what should I do? So now the question is, why? Why now? Why are we asking ourselves now, why? Why ask? Do you know that the world around you is changing so fast? I hope you, you can see the changes, I mean, how, how the things were some like 5-10 years back and how, how the things are. Uh, you know, I mean, when I started working some 12, 15 years back, I worked for Deutsche Bank in New York, and I never imagined I will be, I'll be supporting them sitting here in India. They're like seven, seven seas away, so many thousands of kilometers away, and sitting in India, I could support them. Some 20 years back or 25 years back, I could not have imagined doing that, even talking with them. So things are changing so fast. I mean, 12 years back, and this, uh, this KPO industry must have started like this particular one, must have started like 12, 15 years back. So I could speak with the guy on a daily basis and we could actually work on a company, do research, make recommendations or whatever. The point is, things around you are changing so fast. If you don't change yourself, you're doomed. In fact, Winston Churchill has said something like this. To change is to improve and to be perfect is to change often. If you really, I mean, Winston Churchill said this in 1940s or something. But now it is like, it is even more apt these days than it was like so many years back. So what is happening around? As I said, 10, 15 years back when I, when I started working, it was like, okay, I could work with a guy who is sitting in New York and I was sitting here and buddy, we could, we used to interact on a daily basis. That could, could not have been ha possible some like 20, 50, 25 years back. Even now, obviously you, you use all these Amazon and this Flipkart and everything, all these apps. Do, do you really imagine this happening some like 15 years back or 10 years back? All this happened in the last five years. Things around you are changing at a faster clip. And we can't really take things for granted. Sometime back, it was like your dad working for some PSU and he worked for, for PSU for, for his entire life. Now nothing is guaranteed. That's the reason why, the, the, as the world around you is changing so fast, you've got to change yourself this fast. If not this fast, you have to, and that will ensure that you're keeping pace with this. If you want to succeed, you'll have to, I mean, you'll have to do that even at a faster clip. That's the reason. Has anyone heard about a guy called Vinod Khosla? Wow, good. I heard yes from somewhere. Yes? This is good to know. I mean, do you guys read newspapers? 
who reads newspapers which one wow good what was the headline today yesterday okay forget the headline which was the prominent news that you remember which any any last 15 days last one month so it was about the kickass torrent uh, the torrent is being switched of the ceo or the company head of kickass the forum. Okay. kickass forum kickass torrent sir it's an online site which is being banned okay okay I yes that, yeah. sir Okay, so torrents is what you are following in economics. No, it's it is it's on the main page of that uh, oh, economics okay. time. Oh, any other news that you remember? Mm. It also talks about your interest, huh? So, so ensure that you tell the right name, right right news. <laughs> any other news? No, sir. Anything? What is happening with the banking industry around? What is happening with the stock market? Anyone follows stock market here apart from Akshay? <laughs> you follow stock market? Interesting. Yeah, Indian, global, US. Yeah, I will come. To, I will come back to you. Yeah, yeah. Indian markets. Wow, interesting. Yeah, actually, uh, I have worked for nine months in a stock market advisory company. Oh, which one? Uh, sir, waste to capital. Waste to capital. That was yes, Pune sir. based. Sorry, that sir. That is Pune based. No, sir, Indore. Indore based. What exactly did you do there? Uh, sir, I was business analyst there. Oh, fantastic. Uh huh. Uh, yes, sir. So basically, my work to have was to handle the clients. Okay. Uh, and to advise them according for the according to the investment, the segment, uh, the best segment in which they can work. Okay, interesting. So, what was the interesting advice that you gave? Uh, sir, basically, this is my idea, so I got to know this. Right? Yeah. Yes, sir. No. Sir, basically, according to the investment, like uh, like uh, we can work in options. The person who are not having heavy, heavy investment and they go for cash stock cash so that was not the basic uh, requirement according to their investment so they can go for options options also yes, you sir. proposed options call and put options sir call and put uh, what is call option sir call option is when the person is having the right to buy okay so what did you propose him why did you propose the call option uh, did you propose the call option or put option so when the market is on bear oh, this, is market. Theoretical, this is theoretical what is the example <laughs> sir exactly i did what was the advice you gave Sir, the advice was uh, the call pattern was there. So uh -huh. call pattern. Yeah. What is call pattern? I don't really know that. Huh? Okay, sir. So buy above, sell below, and the three targets were given. One stop loss. That is exactly the call pattern is. Okay. Okay. Uh huh. So according to that, uh, the person has to invest, and they have to put the bidding on the target. According to the market movements, they mm -hmm. first have to go for the first target. Mm -hmm. According. Simultaneously, they have to place the stop loss also. Okay. Uh, and when the market price comes, and if they book the first target, mm -hmm. then it depends on the uh, circumstances. Then they may or they may not go for the second target or wait for the third target. Okay, good. So, any any recent example or any company you think of which can be a good candidate for? Sir, call actually, from last month, uh, from past one month, I am not uh, regularly watching the scripts. But uh, I know the Nifty Fifty that it is going around eight uh, eight thousand five hundred and fourteen. Interesting. Interesting. What is your background? Sir, undergrad degree. Sir, BCom taxation. Taxation. Yes, sir. Okay. The direct, indirect, international. Which taxation was that? Sir, Indian. Like overall, it was. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. I understand. Good. That was good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, sir. Th that gentleman. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Thanks. Good morning, sir. Morning. I am Prashant from Bilai. I am a small investor of stock market. Actually, I have uh, invested from last three years. Actually. You have been investing in the market. Okay. Yes, good. sir. Great. Last Great. three years. Fantastic. And my favorite shares are Arcom and Ashok Leyland. Because Ashok Leyland, I see this script before six months. It has been go around 16 rupees. And nowadays, it has been become 62 rupees or 62 rupees. It's my favorite stock. Reliance Communication. Reliance Communication is one of the leading daily communication in the market okay, because we'll talk about one second. We'll talk about Ashok Leyland. Okay, yes, what did you say? I didn't catch that. Sir, actually, the price was very low, and uh, many investors say that the not in not the right time to invest in the market because Ashok Leyland not going to perform well after the Q1 auto. Are you invested in Ashok Leyland? Yes, sir. How much? Okay, okay. Don't don't give me the number. Oh, since when are you invested? Sir, I am investing six months in Ashok Leyland. You have invested some six months back. Yes, sir. Oh, you must have pocketed good returns. Sixty-two rupees at the at the rate sixty-two rupees. Now five stocks. 
and what was your logic for investing in Ashok Leyland? Sir, because it has been leading company and it uh, the new recently news that the there has been uh, diesel uh, uh, diesel vehicles ban in India. Uh -huh. So Ashok Leyland is the ma uh, manufacturer of trucks and uh, lot of new interesting things because they are performing like uh, means they are performing well in the market. As What's your name, sir? Prashant, sir. Prashant, okay. Uh, while you must have made good returns, but uh, I am not really being able to buy your logic. I didn't really get your logic. Why did you invest in the stock? Sir, I invested in stock because it's given knowledge for me, actually. Okay, that was the purpose. That was the that was so what knowledge did you get in the last six months? Sir, actually six months, every company has some of set up and loss. Means, if, if you can see that the J. Prakash is uh -huh. One of the leading... No, we'll talk about Ashok Leyland. Okay, yes, sir. Huh. Ashok Leyland is the one uh, one time price go to 16 rupees and after uh, no doubt price i mean give me the reasons give me how reason? do you think you should be invested in ashok Leland? yes sir why because their quarter results are good in good. what do you mean by good huh what do you mean by good good means every uh, every automobile industry has some of the uh, means uh, every automobile has, uh, in the means after the june uh, at, the, at the at the end of june month they are some getting the uh, members like q1 q2 q3 q4 so every company uh, like MMM and Ashok Leyland, Ashok Leyland performing very well. So many suggested that the Ashok Leyland is right uh, right time to buy the stock. So after see after I saw the three year financial seat, I have to invest in Ashok Leyland. Okay, you okay. <sighs> Interesting. So you looked at the financial number. You looked at the numbers. Yes, sir. What numbers did you look at? Sir, actually I have recently all the means pro, uh, means. I have written all, all the information like balance sheet every time. So I have read the, all this information and I have. Going haywire, man. You know the ratios? No, did sir. you look at any ratio? No, sir. Ratio I did not. It looks like you are going to go for finance, right? Yeah, no, sir. I am going for marketing. Oh. Why are you wasting your time, man? Talking with me about this. <laughs> you are wasting that time, actually. <laughs> no, sir. I am keen learner of stock market. You are keen learner, okay. Okay, actually one of the ratios that we typically look at is P ratios. I thought, okay, you will at least talk about P ratio. What is P ratio? Any idea? Profitable Profit volume ratio. Which one? Profit volume ratio, I think. PB ratio. Profit? <laughs> anyone, anyone but clear. <laughs> Profit warning ratio? Who said? No, not you, for sure. <laughs> not you. Profit warning ratio? Volume ratio? PE ratio? Volume, where is volume? PE. -E. What is profit volume? I never heard of this profit volume. What is PE ratio? PE. Wow, that's good. What is profit earning ratio? <laughs> okay, what is the concept? Concept is what I'm interested in. We can de develop the formula. Uh, profit earning would be like. Uh, 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 the earning which you, uh, the profit which you earn on like per unit share. It's not actually profit earning ratio, it is price earning ratio. Price. Price. Uh, it's pre you knew that? Do you want to take a stab at that, huh? Oh yes. With age man, we don't really hear that well. Age? Actually <laughs> I studied about this PV ratio in my third year. A PE ratio you studied? Yes, sir. What PE. is PE then? Price earning ratio. What is that? So it's a. Uh, <coughs> what could that be? Just take a stab at what could that price be? Price earning ratio is uh, profit after tax minus dividend upon number of shares. I don't think so. Yes. No, I don't think so. <laughs> it's a price earning ratio. It's not a profit earning ratio. Price so earning. Talking about price earning ratio. Yeah, even that. It's not that. Price earning, just look at this. Just, just think about this. I mean, I just want you guys to think and ask questions, right? So just think about it. What could that be? As I said, price earning ratio is the most important ratio. Why is that so? Price is market price, as is rightly said. Market price is the numerator. Market price and the, the price at which you are buying a particular share. Okay? And E is earning per share. So how much you are getting for that particular share? So if I'm buying a particular share at 60 rupees, right? And if earning per share of that particular company is 10 rupees, Price earning, share, price earning ratio becomes 6. What it means is, if if this company was trading, for example, Ashok Leyland was trading like at 70 rupees. I hope you are understanding all this. It, be, it, is, it will obviously deviate towards finance because I have that background, that is the only thing I know. So although I wanted to make it very general, 
although I wanted to keep it very general, but my examples will be from finance. You know, I can't really help that. I'm really sorry, the marketing guys. So you understood the example that he gave? He, okay, he invested in Ashok Leland at 60 rupees. Okay, Ashok Leland has a earning per share of 10 rupees. Now, what does that mean? 60 rupees is, is the price at which you have bought this particular share, one share. And now earning per share, I mean, this is what the company has earned in the, in the throughout, throughout the year. Probably la it, they can like various ways of looking at earning per share. It can like telling 12 months, it can like forward looking, it can be anything. There are various ways, I mean, you will learn all that in your, in your courses. So f he has paid 60 rupees for that particular share. So what is he getting in return? What is he getting? You are a shareholder now, so you are part owner of the company. So in, in a sense, you own earning per share that company has earned net profit of that company was like whatever and per share has come to like 10 rupees so what does i mean he that 10 rupees per share i mean to, to some extent if he has bought one share he has ownership ownership on that so what does this tell me is okay i i have invested in this company at 60 rupees i'm getting in return i'm getting something in return right 10 rupees or something so it's like okay 6 rupees is my price to earning multiple now what it means is okay if this company was trading at like 50 rupees earlier now it is trading at 60 rupees. So it was earlier, it was like, I, for, by investing, by investing 50 rupees, I could get one share. Now I had to invest, to get the same share, I had to invest 60 rupees. What it means is earlier it was cheaper, now it is costlier. So this PE ratio, this one ratio is something which can be, which can be used across the sectors. It just tells you, okay, for a particular rupee, how much you are get, going to get in return. Very simple. Is that clear? Sure. No second year guys here? No second year guys, right? I want to ask questions, man. That's the reason. <laughs> so I can't really ask questions to these guys, right? <laughs> okay, Akshay, I'll just leave you. Yeah, I'll just <laughs> let you breathe easy. <laughs> How many commerce grads are here? Oh, so that's why majority of them want to go for finance. Is it that? That's pretty amazing. I'll just ask a few questions. I mean, I've been taking interviews for a long time. So after a long, I mean, this is like first time I'm seeing so many candidates or what is goodwill? Goodwill, huh? Good, good, good. You wait for a sec, I will just come back to you. I'll just, uh, uh, you want to say something, yeah. Uh, good morning, sir. My morning. name is Priya Bhatnaga and I'm from MP Bhopal, Bhopal MP. Sir, goodwill is a reputation of a company in, um, uh, to the outside world whether it is uh, investors, whether it is shareholders, whether it is uh, customers. Good. So you are the commerce lad? Yes, sir. Okay. Any other, uh, yeah. yeah that, that's right, huh? by the way, that's not wrong. <laughs> yeah. sir, my name is Shweta Mukharia. I'm from Damo, Madhya Pradesh. Mm -hmm. Sir, goodwill is the market value of any entity that an entity has earned over years good. in market. Good, that's good. Pretty good, yeah. Somebody want to, uh, yeah, you want to say. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Morning, yeah. My name is Adnan Arshad. Goodwill is intangible asset of a company. Uh, uh, it is the value earned by the company. Value earned by the company. You are commerce guard? Yes, yes what sir. What do you mean the value earned by the company? Value earned by the company as in the reputation the company holds. So that's what she said? Yes, sir. Anything new? Intangible oh. asset. It's intangible asset. So yes. what do you mean by value earned? Value. I mean, whatever they said covers it. Yes. But sir. what is the new thing that you are telling? What is value earned? What do you mean by that? That's the only thing that I, I found new and off the track. So what do you mean by value earned? Value earned by the company as in the that uh, tr the trust that this company or this entity can trust, be. That's why it is intangible you are saying. Somebody is hiding there or what? Okay, you wanted to say something. Goodwill is an intangible asset which can also be sold. Uh, a name, uh, uh, goodwill can also be sold to. Uh, yeah. sit, sit, sit. Mm -hmm. uh, How to can you sell the goodwill? Uh, who so will buy the goodwill if it is an intangible asset? Uh, I, it's not something like. Uh, 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 yeah. It can be sold in the terms of a money. How do you sell any that? Other, like, uh, uh, okay, by the way, all the commerce guards. I mean, I'm not a commerce guard, so I really. For me, those, these things are very difficult actually. I had to learn the hard way, frankly. How do you calculate goodwill then? Okay, you know that. It's, uh, I mean, Infosys used to give the number for goodwill in the annual report. Probably, I don't know whether she knows, yeah. 
the Infosys, I mean, they used to calculate. The, how do you calculate goodwill then? Okay, you know that it's a trust. It's whatever. I mean, it's the, yeah. Obviously, I didn't want to talk about this, but now that we are talking about finance and stuff. Good morning, sir. My morning. name is Abhimanyu. Sir, uh, when we add, uh, uh, if I am running a business, if I want to add some person in my business, partnership business, at that time I calculate uh, goodwill. Uh, there are many uh, methods to calculate. Okay, no, this is 100% wrong, so we will not get into the methods then. This is wrong, yeah. As per the profit of... Uh, this is wrong, we will not get into that. Do that. Cool, okay? Okay. Goodwill, as you rightly said, that's what goodwill is. But goodwill is typically generated when company A acquires company B. So what happens is when I'm acquiring a company B, I know that there is some valuation of the company B. If it is listed on the exchange, I know that the exchange is valuing, exchange or the investors are valuing this company at 100 crore rupees. But if I'm paying, now that, okay, the acquisitions don't happen that way. So if I'm paying 110 crore rupees to acquire that particular business, that 10 crore rupees extra that I'm paying is called goodwill. Is it clear? So it's now, now this is the concept. Now you can define it the way you want. Is the extra value that I'm paying above the market value is goodwill. It, you can like, you can like, you can have like n number of ways, but concept is this. There is a company A. Company A wants to acquire company B. Company B's value is 100 crore rupees, but I'm paying, the company is paying 110 crore rupees. That extra 10 crore rupees that company A is paying for whatever, whatever reasons, the reputation. I mean, you have to have some intangible things to say because when you're doing the valuation, you're considering everything actually. Should we talk about valuation? How do we do the valuation? I don't think so. Anyway, so that 10 crore rupees is goodwill, right? Is that clear? Yes. Uh, this question will probably, this is one of the questions that I used to ask. So if I'm there, I will always ask this question. So just to see that how much do you know about your commerce thing? That's the reason. I mean, this is not, we are never going to use this in equity research. Goodwill, probably I don't know whether you will do the valuation of goodwill or not. You will not, you are not going to do the valuation of goodwill, but this just tells me how fundamentally strong you are with your concepts. Okay, we have asked ourselves questions now. We know where are we. So what is the next step? What do we do? Prepare. Oh, you said prepare, right? So how do you prepare? That's very, very good. Huh? How do you prepare yourself? Anybody, anyone here knows Abraham Lincoln? Yeah, who knows? Who doesn't know Abraham Lincoln rather? Is there anyone who doesn't know Abraham Lincoln here? Somebody sitting in the back? You are sitting there, right? Do you want to sit, sit here? She's the first year student. Why, 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 why make her stand here? Okay, who was Abraham Lincoln? Can you hear me? It looks like she's being punished, man. <laughs> yeah. Who was Abraham Lincoln? The first president. Fantastic. 44th or something, whatever. Okay, so what? That's good, huh? He was US president. And he did a lot of things. Not only, I mean, he is not known only for being US president. I mean, a lot of things, a lot of right things he did. He is known for all that. Similarly, although Kasanawa is only for uh, is known only for Kasanawa things, he is lot more than what, lot more than that. So he was a traveler. Actually, and now that we talked about Kasanawa, I got to, got to say about that. That is the only. Uh, I mean, he wrote the autobiography. That is the only authentic version available, which tells about the he he was like he traveled all over Europe. He is like he represents Europe. So he's the writing at that time didn't used to be very clear. They used to talk about ornamental, you know. Okay, how the how the facade of the building was, how the roads were. So, so that is the only document which is considered to be the most authentic documentation on the Europe's cultural background, how the Europe's culture was back then. So, Casanova is much more than what we know him for now. On the on the same lines, Abraham Lincoln is also much more than what. Okay, we know him for like many things, but yeah, Abraham Lincoln is like big guy. Okay, so one of the things that he has said about preparation, what he says is, if I have to axe a tree. And if you give me eight hours to axe a tree, for the, for the first six hours, I will just be sharpening the axe. First six hours, I will not even think about putting my axe on the tree. For, I will not even think about okay, how big the tree is. I will just be sharpening my saw, sharpening my axe. So six, out of the eight hours, he will be spending, he, he said he will spend six hours on sharpening the saw. So it means the amount of importance that he put on the preparation. It means, what, what is he doing? He's just preparing himself and then he's getting onto the job. In the same when I belong to the research background, I mean, he, in your way to wealth, there must be some research department, some people doing only the research, looking at the companies, writing about the companies, right? That's what I did, by the way. 
the background work okay so in that research if somebody asks me he wants my opinion he wants me to write a report on a company called infosys and i am given a i'm given 30 days i mean this is an actual experience actually i mean it depends on the client i mean some clients used to give us one year to write a report on the company but now nowadays things are really difficult so it's like if i get one month to write on a company called infosys i will spend 20 days only on reading about the company 20 days flat 20 days 20 days i will just be reading taking down my notes 21st day i will start putting taking i will start writing the report the point is two third of the time i just spend on reading getting to know about the company so that's that's the kind of importance i personally have put on this this on on preparation so prepare prepare yourself well you know i mean one has to work man one you are going to go in the corporate world sooner than later actually so just ask yourself are you well prepared to be in corporate world you desire a lot of things man you the, the first thing that we ask is what is the highest package what is the average package the question that you should be asking yourself is do i really deserve that that's the question am i really well prepared i mean if a company is paying me 6 lakhs per annum whatever that's 50 50000 per month do i really deserve to be paid 50000 per, per per month do i really do that kind of work and do i really add that kind of value to to the team that i am in so first i mean we have asked the question we have prepared ourselves then probably so that's the way i mean you you got to prepare yourself and these are the two most important years you have got you have got the right people here to ask questions to and and to prepare yourself for the for the next big leap that you are taking and in the meantime we have really forgotten to talk about vinod khosla i mean when we were talking about change 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 why do we need to change just once you go back just read about this guy vinod khosla the reason being he is the guy who has been talking about this change technological change anybody feeling sleepy there out there i am seeing a lots of faces who are not at all interested in this discussion man why the hell this guy is talking man why why is he? so that that's the feel i'm getting from this section actually i don't know why i just got the feel tea breaks you had a tea break yes, sir. why doesn't i why don't i feel like that in, in this area okay you are you are all with me right you you are following me what am i saying am i too fast or is it okay the the and that's the that's the usual complaint that my wife makes so i just thought of clarifying that <laughs> anyway uh we not kosla we talked about technological changes we have talked about the changes that are happening around us and that's why we have to change ourselves that's what we have talked about so this guy we not kosla has been talking about this changing landscape ch- changing la- technological landscape around us this is the guy who some years back the change 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 i mean we talked about winston churchill we talked we, we, i gave my example i mean we also talk what this guy said sometime some years back was 80% of the doctors will not be requ- in us in 2012 i guess he said something like that 80% of, of the doctors will not be required because we won't need them he had his i mean this guy has been investing investing in technology heavy companies this guy was very bullish on this bio bio fuel you heard about you heard about biofuel you are not heard about he invested heavily in these companies who were into biofuel because he was like very sure that this traditional fuel is going to be replaced by biofuels and he was investing in those companies so this is the guy who who actually talks about change that things are changing rapidly around you so if you get a chance you would try to find his article like when he says that the currently whatever jobs are out there 80% of the jobs will not be there and there will be new jobs that's what he says there will be new jobs i mean you have seen man the it industry came up in the last 20 25 years i mean this was not there and this is it has become the largest recruiter so that in this in the same when the jobs that you are seeing now will not be there a few years down the line so the point is you have to see a few not not everybody can be a visionary probably you and i don't know what is going to be there you and i don't know whether i am going to be relevant a few years down the line i don't really know that but just just look around guys the the the, the world is changing the the things are changing and are you really geared up are you really in sync with what is happening around so if you get a chance that's the request if you get a chance just read an article by this guy vinod khosla he is an iitian iitd and after that he did his mba from some harvard or carnegie or somewhere and he is based out of us i guess 1.5 billion dollars is his wealth his current wealth but but he is known more i mean one thing that he says he typically invest in these companies who will bring huge change to the world something like biofuel and he says even if my 90% of my investments fail at least 10% will change the world that's his view so that's what he is so he is the guy for this and finance guys should read whoever should read about the guys like 
call icon. Has anyone heard about call icon? Pershing Square, no, I, I don't really expect. I mean, even I didn't know, frankly. <laughs> when I was doing my MBA, I didn't really know about Carl Icahn and stuff. The only thing that I knew was I'm, I'm going to do my MBA in finance. So that's the only thing. So that's good enough. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. This is it, man. You have prepared yourself well now. I guess next is, there are a couple of books, I mean, I really liked. I was, when I was doing my MBA, there are a couple of HR books. HR books, I don't really advise any HR book. I'm like, for me, it is like your hardcore knowledge is what matters. You how to know your finance things. Probably Manoj and, 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 and the staff will tell you about, about the various courses that you should be doing. That will really help you in actually, it's more about getting an entry ticket, entry, entry ticket in the, in the corporate world. So he will talk about the CFA programs that you should be doing along with the MBA. That will really prepare you better to get into the corporate world and do well. But for me, I mean, they, they, you must have heard about the books like You Can Win and stuff, right? I haven't, I, haven't really heard, I haven't really read that, but there are a couple of books that I really loved back in my college. When, when I haven't read those in the last many years, but when I was doing my MBA, there are a couple of books that really, I mean, it's like, I'm really surprised that I'm s suggesting some HR books, but you should just read that, those books and just think about that, what does that mean? Has anyone heard about a guy called Deepak Chopra? Do you guys really read, man? I have, I have a serious question now. Do you read? Where is this guy? Do you read? What do you read? Where is the Economist Times guy? <laughs> you really read, right? That's good. But Deepak Chopra, you have not heard about. Okay, more of a spiritual guy. Spiritual, I mean. But he is uh, really a sought after guy in the corporate world. He was back then, at least. So he has written a book called, wait, I mean, did I, do I have a name? Oh. He has written a book called Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. If you can get, I mean, I don't know, you are HR, you, we must have some HR faculty, right? So my HR, the, the, the guy who taught me HR, he was like HLL, he was a director in Hindustan Liver Limited and he was a very experienced guy and, he, and that's where it came from. I mean, I didn't know on my, on my own that I should be reading this book. He proposed and we read and I really found those books very good actually. So this seven spiritual laws of success, I mean, I know they are like, they can be like hundreds of books which talk about okay, 10 laws of attracting girls or whatever. I mean, they can be many. I don't really believe in all that, but if you look at this book, Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, he has talked about various laws. A few I can remember are something called Law of Dharma. There is something called Law of Detachment. So there are like seven laws like this. Just read those laws and see what he wants to say in that law and just think about, just think about that. It will convey a lot of message to you. I will actually propose, I mean, I have not met your HR professor. I will even propose him. He can actually take he can have these books and he can actually make you guys present on those laws. It will actually make you think. And when you think about that, that will really give you a lot of message, okay, how, how the thing should be like. That is one book I would like to propose to you guys. And second book is, there is a guy, guy called Stephen Covey. Stephen Covey and he has written this book called Seven Habits of, again Seven Habits. Oh, anyone here? Wow, good to know. Seven Habits of Highly Successful People, right? You have read that? You are in oh, that's good, that's good, that's good. Uh -huh. You want to tell more about that? <sighs> Any, no, you don't remember. Anything of that? It's quite interesting. Uh, if we, if we oh, that, anybody could have said that. Yeah. <laughs> uh. If we actually uh, practice all these uh, the, the uh, habits that they have given into that, like perseverance and all. Uh, perseverance? Yeah. Means yeah, win-win situation was there one, I guess. Win-win yes, situation. Sir. Okay, okay. I don't so, really uh, yeah, even. I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, it's yeah, been like the 50 habits, years. Yeah. The habits uh, we should practice, and if we really practice it into the corporate world, we yeah, we practice. Could get so even at least you think about those, yes, and it sir. will really make you think. Yes, I don't really want you guys to be like very spiritual. <laughs> don't don't be like Deepak Chopra. This is not the right time to be spiritual. Actually, this is the time to carve your niche in the corporate world. But there can like n number of books out there. They can be. There are n number of books who are telling you do this do that but you have to know that okay at this point in time what is the most important book for me what is the book that tells me okay how to how to get into the corporate world first things first as i said this was like as this was going to be very generalistic inter interaction first things first you have to ask yourself questions as we discussed i hope people will not forget this story about kasanama you have to ask yourself questions and after that now we know you have started asking yourself question now which are which are the profiles that are offered 
how can I get into that? Once your base is ready, then probably you can think about these things. You, first things first is you have to get a very good job. And, and they are they are like very able guys who are there to help you. At the same time, you can actually you can have your own contacts. You can have if you know that okay, this part, if there is a there is a particular company that you think you are interested in, and that particular company doesn't really doesn't really visit the campus, you on your own should be able to actually I don't know what is the protocol here, but you can actually contact them and to, you can ensure that that company actually visits the campus. So the point is, if you know what exactly you want, you should actually take the take all the steps to actually to be there. So now is like you have to set your goal and you have to actually, I mean, everybody will give this kind of no, give this kind of GAN. So I don't want to get, actually get into that. But at this point in time, just decide for yourself what exactly do you want to do. Are you here to, because look, this, this is PG, this is not like engineering or some graduation where you know, okay, you know, man, okay, this is, the, this is the time of your life and now this is the best time to enjoy your life. This is like you have to now decide, I mean, because after this, either you are going to get married, you are going to, going to have a responsibility, or obviously you have to start earning now. So this is like, this is serious. So you have to start no you have to you have to know first okay this is serious that is the first i'm just looking at myself and giving my examples i don't know i mean i don't know you guys might be like more serious than i am or than than i ever was but at the same time you have to know what you are doing now what you are going to do two years down the line what is it that i will take me that will that will take me there in that particular corporate world and what are the qualities that i require and these are the two years you can inculcate all the qualities that you need for your corporate world this this is the platform guys and you have to utilize that platform this is the message I had not really prepared for this. I had just few things that I wanted to talk about, and I guess I had a good interaction with you guys. Yeah, you must sit, please. So yeah, I'm done from my side. I hope y you will ask questions, not to me, to somebody else, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Is there anything you want to know about finance or anything else? Any finance guy, the first thing you have to start with is like, which are the finance companies that are visiting our campus? One. What are the various profiles that are available in Finland? Now the problem is, unfortunately, we don't belong to the IAMs. That you can pick and choose. Unfor even I don't belong to the IAM, frankly. So you can pick and choose. So you have to make the most of whate whatever is available. So then out of that, you have to pick the, pick the best that suits you. What, what is best for me doesn't necessarily mean it should be best for you. In my case, I made a lot of mistakes, frankly. I'll just, uh, I'll just give one more example, and probably I'll just go away. I was placed in a research company, research, proper equity research. I was placed in a research company. And I thought, I mean, you know, I mean, after engineering, I did my MBA and I was like bubbling with energy and I had my own interpretations, or own understanding about myself that I'm a very outgoing personality and I'm a very dashing personality and this research is doesn't, research doesn't really suit me. That was my understanding. Research, I mean, I went to the job. I didn't really, really know anything about research, just that I cleared the exam. They asked me questions and Fortunately, I was really good with my concept. concepts. That's the only thing I knew about. But I didn't really know anything about anything beyond that. So concepts, I cracked the interview. I went there. And I didn't really know what exactly the job entails. That was like the worst thing that, that about me. So I went there and I was made to sit there for the whole day. And I was, I was supposed to pass through the balance sheet, the income statements, and the annual reports. I was like, man, I, went to, I, I can't really do this. this is, I'm not really meant to be, meant to be sitting, at one, sitting one chair and sitting in one chair and play, play doing this for the, for the entire day. I went there for three days and I quit the job, frankly. So that's the worst thing. I quit the job and even I guess the, the employer was more than happy to let me go actually, <laughs> the way I was performing there. So after third day, I, I came back to my campus as it was like very initial, I mean, equity research was, this, even back then it was a very sought after career because I mean, it's like analysis, analysis and you really think very highly, highly about, about you. So many of my friends, finance friends really shouted at me, how can you do this and be bloody, we will give anything to get into, uh, get into a profile like this. I was like, man, that doesn't, doesn't really suit me. The point is, I didn't really know what I want. I came back, I was out of the campus process then. We had like, it was like, again, the decision time when I did my MBA, as always. So I was not allowed to sit for other companies, so I didn't take, so I had to go for like, I thought, okay, man, sales and marketing is what suits me the best. I mean, my personal is like, okay, man, wow. I used to think about myself, okay, that's a different story. So I took a sales job in, in, in ICCA, ICSA, selling insurance, ICSA bank. I mean, how I got the job, that was again tough. And that gave me the real experience of how tough the corporate world can be. After six months, I realized this is not a job for me. I, I wanted to go back to research and I got back to research. Then again, it was like, it was a tough road then. The point then, okay, I, I, I mean, after having evaluated the two, but two, two roles, okay, one was like hardcore research where you know, I had to pass to the pass to the balance sheets and the equity, uh, balance sheets and income statements and the, and the research reports. And the other one was like hardcore selling, bloody. I, was, I used to sit, 
I, I traveled all over Mumbai back then actually. Now you went point to the other to Juhu. I sat in all the benches. I was like all the high net worth individuals I might might have pitched to. On one day, by the way, uh, Abhishek Bachchan also had also walked in and I also wanted to talk with him, but I didn't do that. So the point is, anybody walking in and buddy, I, I was selling insurance. So, and then I realized, I'm all do I do I? I mean, they were like another. One had to start with that. After that, okay, there were other roles, but okay, the starting point in sales and marketing was that you had to, you had to start with selling the insurance. Then after doing it for six months, I realized, Amol, this is not your calling, man. This is not what you are meant to be doing. You are not really that dashing. You are not really doing that well. Research is your calling. You should be doing research. Then I got back to research and fortunately did well. And fortunately, I got another chance. So point is, the, the, the time that I wasted after my MBA in knowing what I want to do was futile. I should not have done that. I mean, I had so many people telling me the faculty was there, the, my seniors were there, my colleagues were there. I could have talked with them. I could have discussed with them. And they were like many companies. Luckily, we had like many finance companies visiting, visiting our campus, and I could have picked picked the one that I wanted. But unfortunately, I had to learn it the hard way. So I, I just want you guys not to do the same mistake. Utilize these two years to the to the. I mean, your core knowledge, your concepts is the most important thing. After that, you have to know what is happening around. What are the companies visiting? Which is the profile you want to get in, and stuff like that. There is no ideal profile per se. There is no ideal, and you have to make the max. It's not that okay. Hindustan Level Limited doesn't visit our campus. So you can't be aspiring for Hindustan Level Limited. And HLL will never visit the campus. Okay. So you have to, I mean, in the in the available means, you have to ensure that okay, this is the max that I can do for myself. And you are just helping yourself, no, nobody else actually. This is it. I guess from my side, this is it. Any, anything else? Good. No tough questions, huh, please. Good afternoon, sir. Afternoon. My name is Anushri Ganguly. I'm from Varanasi, Uttar Pradesh. Sir, my question to you is, uh, is goodwill shown under the balance sheet really good enough for the balance sheet? Ah, that's a very good question. What do you think? I think it's not. That's, 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 that answers. So, but what's the real reason behind this? Means I'm a little confused about it. Mm -hmm. That yes, we have the reputation. It should be good, right? But it shows that since it's intangible, so the uh, cash is really not in our hand. Mm -hmm. So it's a demerit. Mm -hmm. So why so? Then why we say that it's the reputation of the company? Okay, good question. Why do we say it's the reputation of the company? What, what did I say? Uh, how is goodwill generated? How is goodwill generated? Uh, the company builds its reputation over the years. How is it generated? Okay, the valuation. How do you calculate that? Valuation of goodwill. Uh, how did that particular number come on the balance sheet? Where did that come from? From the assets and liabilities, outside liabilities. How do you get that? Merger. At the time of merger, most of the times, most of the times, at the time of merger acquisition, company yeah, A merger, has acquired yes. a company B. So when you are acquiring that company B, you are doing the valuation. But it has been valued by somebody else. The market has valued. If Infosys is being acquired by, for example, Accenture, so Infosys has is already been valued. So you have balance sheet. Okay. Company A has acquired company B. Company B has got the balance sheet, right? So now when you are actually consolidating the two balance sheets, consolidation, okay? When the company A's and company B's balance sheets are being consolidated, you will line by line item, you will add the line by line item. For example, okay, this is my crude understanding of being an engineer. I don't really understand the concepts that well, but I have my own understandings. So while doing that, you have, when you are doing the acquisition game, it's not that easy. You, whatever value is there on the balance sheet, you're not going to pay the exact amount. You are paying something above that, right? What is that amount? How are you going to capture that amount? It just captures that. Then that's that. It just captures that. It doesn't tell me anything at all. You have heard about goodwill impairment? Impairment, that's what. Goodwill impairment is, you realize that man, whatever this goodwill is there on the balance sheet is for nothing. It doesn't mean anything to me. You just impair that over the years. Goodwill impairment. Getting rid of that. Simple. Does that make sense? Any, anyone heard about a company called Yahoo? What, does do, what do they do? What is happening with Yahoo, by the way, these days? Anyone knows about what is happening with Yahoo, the corporate developments? No? You? Who is the CEO of Yahoo? Simple question. Huh. Yeah, you, 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 you. Yeah. Wow, fantastic. Why do you know her? So because she is a lady and there, there is some story behind it. Yahoo is now uh, uh, not growing so well. Fantastic. Uh, and the reason behind is that they are copying some strategy. No, I won't get into that. I, I don't really know the know, know the reason. If I knew the reason, I would have been consulting them. That's a different story. Okay, what do you know? What, what do you think is the reason? Sir, they, ha they are uh, copying some strategy of Google, like they are providing more and more facilities to their employees, 
as Google is providing, and they are. You're doubting. Okay. Anyways, your first answer was good. That's good enough, actually. Knowing Maya is Maya, and and the, the company not doing well, that is good enough for for this class. I mean, but the second part was like totally off the track. But okay, first part more than makes up for that. Okay. So Maya is Maya is the CEO, and he was she was she is a very high profile CEO, and she is known. I thought you will know her because of her fashion sense. She has been talked about a lot in the fashion world as well. Okay, the way she dressed herself and stuff like that. And one of the interesting things about her was, I mean, now that we are talking about her, you know, earnings call, earnings quarterly earnings. You know, this guy talked about quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. So on one of the earnings calls, she started on the earnings call, and the second day she delivered, she delivered twins. So that's the big thing again. She delivered twins. I mean, personal life and professional life. I mean, how committed one can be to the job. She was on earnings call. You didn't understand this story. Right? I mean, what am I saying? There's something called quarterly qu quarterly earnings. Company announces earnings every quarter. So typically, what happens is every quarter, this this management, company management, CEO, CFO, and the CEO and everybody will be sitting on the sitting. Uh, they they will actually arrange a conference call where the analyst and the investor community comes and they ask questions. The first, these guys talk about the quarter, how the quarter was, how the numbers were, the strategy they talk about, and they tell everything about the company. And then the question answer session 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 happens. So this lady was there on the earnings call. Attending the earnings call, she along with the CFO, CFO answering the questions, and on the second day, she goes back and she delivers twins. So this is like commitment. So that's really, that's not what I want to talk about. Yahoo, we are talking about. I mean, by the way, she was hired from Google. She was a very high, pro high profile employee of Google. She was hired from Google. She was supposed to turn down the company Yahoo, and she didn't do that. She is she is not being able to, and she she is now she is in a battle with the, with the board for 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 for. Turning on the company, on the the way the things they were they had imagined the things, nothing has happened actually. She she is a total flop at the point at this point in time. So one of the things Maya Maya had done was she had acquired a company called Tumblr for one billion dollars. So that's the recent thing they have done. They have actually they have actually written down the the value, whatever value they had assigned to this particular acquisition. They have written that down now to four hundred million dollars. So that's how the acquisition works. You also write down the acquisitions. So I mean I was just answering this in response to a question, but she is listening. She is looking down. Okay. This particular example was in response to a question actually about. <coughs> hey, but I hope you got the. Okay, go back and read about Yahoo and Tumblr, and you will get the answer. Fine. Good. Anything else? Ah. Oh, hey, wait to wait. You don't ask questions, man. Your your questions will be tough. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. Afternoon. My name is Imanshu, and I am from Chhatrapur. So the there has been uh, there has been a news in air since uh, that center has injected somewhere around twenty three thousand crore rupees uh, in PSB public sector banks in the name of recapitalization. So what I was wondering uh, that uh, this money uh, these uh, like twenty three thousand crore rupees belong to the honest taxpayers and the tax defaulters actually they are roaming scot free. So uh, my logic is uh, that should not be the organizations like these public sector banks. Uh, having such large engagements or uh, large, uh, we can say transactions, so they should not be uh, rena uh, rely on central government. Like the central government is actually patronizing all these public sector banks, so should not be the they be self reliant and become because uh, that that has been uh, that is the taxpayers' money and uh, like they get the loan uh, with very difficulties, a lot of difficulties actually. That's a very good question. I, is that done? Or do you have anything else to add? There? That's the difference between aspirations and reality, my friend. I mean, you want something to happen. You want something to be to happen some way, but it doesn't really happen. That that is one. Two is who is the biggest shareholder in these companies? So I mean, they are just taking care of their own shareholding. Actually, yeah. what what I mean, the 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 normal shareholders are the ones who are benefiting because of this. Actually, if you ask me, State Bank of India is listed on the exchange. Government is the shareholder. I am also shareholder. For example, if the government is the only one who is taking care of this, actually, I am being compensated for that. I mean, that taxpayer money and this will not get into that. I don't really know the political aspects of that. But ideally, everybody should be responsible for what they are doing. Ideally, but it doesn't really happen that way. Yeah, have you tracked Vijay Malla story? I could send something like that. Vijay Malla story. What What is the story? Are you going for finance or MBA? Uh, finance or marketing? I'm not not decided. Yeah. That is good. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So uh, the what about Vijay Malya's? Actually, uh, he has flown, and after that, when the center actually there has been okay, some no, no, political I mean, political intervention in that. 
That is okay, not. Uh, I that don't is, want any That is answer. not thoroughly financial issue. There has been a political intervention in that as well. Okay, look at it from MBA aspirant. I just want a perspective from a MBA aspirant. Actually, you were actually aspiring. So tell me the story. What exactly has happened? Uh? From the perspective of Vijay Malya. No, from your perspective, MBA aspirant. Okay, from analytical perspective. That's what I mean. Actually, analytical. How do you analyze that particular situation? I what exactly might have happened? What exactly has happened? Wha what what has happened has happened for right or wrong? Yeah, what I analyze actually uh, that he played with the rules. Mm -hmm. He distorted the rules according did he, to his. Did he play with the rules? Huh? Did he play with the rules? Yeah, he did play with the did rules. Did he? Yeah, because uh, whenever he was uh, in the initial stage, he was uh, when he was tracked down, he was. Uh, like oh, you're you're getting into the different aspect. I'm just talking about what is the scam, by the way? What exactly did he do? Did he do? The scam in the king. What is the scam? Yeah, that's. That is the I will call it a first, scam. First thing was tax evasion. He did tax it. Tax evasion. Yeah. How how come this tax evasion came into play? Tax evasion. Actually, I don't know that deeply, but uh, they they escaped uh, some sort of tax, a service tax actually. And the other thing is uh, loan. They. I mean, what is happening is you know the story, but you are not looking at it from. This is not what we are interested in here. I mean, this is like layman story that you are telling. I mean, you are like you are talking with the layman outside, and you are just told, telling some 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 story. Borrow, here and there. Borrowing was a fact because they borrowed. What did he do there? What what happened with Kingfisher Airlines? There is a company called UCB Holdings. The movement of funds. Company. The movement of funds actually. Movement of funds. What exactly is that? Ah, uh, they from the they re remove the fund a uh, certain amount of fund from the Kingfisher, and there's uh, other entity which is what, owned. What what went wrong with Kingfisher Airlines? Any idea? It can be a very good case study for your class, huh, by the way. What went wrong with Kingfisher Airlines? Yeah, I mean, somebody should ask you to actually look into that. What exactly happened? Okay, it was a high flying at one time. He wanted to make it a full service business model. It didn't really work. Why didn't it work? What was happening at the time? I mean, Air Deccan actually played havoc. I mean, there were like so many reasons. So actually, some professor of yours, probably, who is like full. I mean, they they should actually ask you to get do a case study on Kingfisher Airlines. What exactly went wrong there? I mean, but no, I mean, what I'm saying is, okay, you have to look at it from an analytical point of view, what exactly has gone wrong. I mean, these are like politics and these things. We will not get into that. What exactly might have gone wrong? I would just ask you to actually read about that. That will be interesting. That will teach you a lot about how the corporate go co corporate governance and corporate things work. Actually, I'm not aware, much aware about the financial aspect of this issue. Not financial aspect. Critically analyzing the aspect. Finance is common sense, if you ask me. Co I mean, as I said, if I can do finance, if I can do reasonably well in finance, anybody can do. It's not. Finance is not some bogey man. It's not like something very. It is common sense man. It's like you have to just apply yourself. It's pretty easy. I mean, it doesn't mean that everybody should go for finance. You have to ask yourself. Okay, do you really suit this particular profile or not? I mean, accordingly. So you you got to see that, and it will really tell you the answer to your question. Yeah, I got the news actually from the newspapers only. That first thing that didn't pay the salary of the employees. Okay, you are thing. reading the newspaper in the paper format. Yeah. When you read the newspaper on the internet, what happens is there are like so many other links. So many. Read all the links. That will give you the answer. That's how I do my research. That is one. Second is you are reading the news. There is something that that you are not understood. Just there is Google. Just try to answer all your questions that you are getting while reading a particular news article. That will give you and that will actually tell you all the tell you everything about that particular story. I mean just but but at the same time, it doesn't mean that okay you don't know a particular word and that's why actually you are searching for that. It's not that. You have to ask yourself. You didn't understand why a particular thing has happened. If he has done some inflation of assets while giving the collateral, so what exactly is that? Just ask for, ask yourself a question. By asking yourself this question is like asking Google a question actually. Just check there and you will get the answers. I mean, when you are reading an article on the Economic Times, you have to ensure that you are asking yourself a few questions and then only you will understand the article. Otherwise, reading for the sake of reading is like anybody does that one. And a fourth grade guy will also read an read an article. But if you are analyzing that article properly, then then that will really answer your questions. Is that okay? We'll cool. certainly do that. Cool, cool. You had something. Good afternoon, sir. Afternoon. My name is Sheetal Dubey. I am from Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh. <coughs> sir, actually, my question is related to research field only. Mm. Uh, so once I had a word with one researcher, mm -hmm. uh, and he told me like during the market hours they just had to sit. in front of the terminal and they couldn't get away from it not even for a lunch and nothing and so now you and after the market hours they just totally get free from right, it right right and so now you told me like uh, you have to prepare the report on the company right, it, it was this way i mean you are probably talking about traders 
paid us no sir research on research sir. research, research i mean is it that his company was announcing his results it could be on those days on the other days research research desk or people who are in sales side research typically mm. they are not really that fixated to the terminals frankly if you ask me so i was never fixated to terminal frankly so sales side research they are not supposed to because because they are like look you can't do everything right they are like so many peop other people who are doing their job so there is sales side research there is buy side research they are traders so traders is who who are supposed to be fixated to the terminals they are the ones who are who have to monitor the reaction but if i am a sales side research guy i don't even look at the day to day term, day to day activity in the shares i don't even look at ashok leland what is happening to the share my job is okay what is it currently trading at and what what should be his, what should be the intrinsic value of the share price so for me you are right but but the profiles are really different sales side research guy will not be spending that kind of time on the on the terminal so no. what are the other profiles of research side ah oh, that's good actually we should take this offline i guess research what are the profiles you know about Uh, so when you told that the uh, sales research only this i know oh sales side research they are like look look they look this all this comes under capital markets again so they can be various things in capital markets in first we have to ask in finance what can be the profiles so it can be like i guess there was some banking guy so he must have talked about corporate banking corporate banking retail banking and stuff i'll talk, talk about capital markets there can be various profiles in capital markets right from investment banking investment banking to the, the the research side so now investment banking so you know about mergers and acquisitions right i guess we should have a special session on that actually in research okay i'll talk about research a bit in research we have sales side research then there is buy side research and then there are traders in research equity research if you ask me sales side and buy side are the only two research sales side is like they only churn out research reports and buy side is like okay they help traders take a call okay so sales side research fits into buy side research so it's like okay if i am a buy side guy they will like five i will be like subscribe to like seven eight investment banks something like jp morgan deutsche bank and everybody and they will be they will be churning out research i will get all those reports and based on that i will prepare my own pager that will be my investment thesis or whatever in some memorandum i will give that give that to the trader and he will like accordingly take a call on that i mean this is the ideal process nobody follows that but that's the ideal process <laughs> yeah uh, so one more thing like you told uh, the reports are prepared on companies Sir, does that uh, thing also affect the market price? Obviously. Sir, intraday basis or long term basis? Yeah, be. <laughs> Look, research again. There are like two types of research: fundamental and technical. You obviously know that. I have not done technical research because I don't really believe in that. That's like I don't really believe in the sense that I feel it's like on the highest level, it's like sophistication. I mean, on the highest level, it's like human behavior. so i think that's not my area for me fundamental research is i will look at the company from all the angles and i will see okay this company share price should go up so for me my call my my calls typically are like 12 months down the line 12 months down the line so my horizon is like 12 months so it all depends it's, it's not like exactly 12 months it can like it can achieve the target price in one month but after a month i have to take a call whether the situation has changed whether the parameters have changed and then i will take a call on the target price of the company but generally when i as a research analyst give a call it is generally 12 months down the line long term intraday i don't really know much about technical i don't really know you ask me questions on technical the way shape and stuff like that i won't know anything about that because technical typically the traders do that technical analysis that's intraday stuff and all we typically do fundamental research good good afternoon sir my afternoon. name is jivraj sharma i am from jaipur rajasthan and my question to you is that uh, why the government is going to change the financial year from 1st january to 31st december i didn't understand that why the government is going to change the financial year from 1st january to 31st december i don't know this i yes, don't really know this no no i don't have an answer to that i don't know the answer Thank do you, you know more about that you can tell us more about this no What sir exactly is that? actually i read uh, the news about this that the, the government is going to change but the reason uh, was not there i don't even know the news Yes. So, so if you only read the title or you read the entire article? So it is uh, was in a small article, and not the entire front no, no, page. No, no. You okay? It was a small article. Fine. Yes. Sir. So did you read the article? Yes, sir. So what was there in the article? The, it was announcing that the government will change, and it uh, the bill is passed in the assembly, and fine. The government will consider it as soon as possible. So the, they must have given some reasons why they are doing this. Yeah, no, sir. There was no reason. Wh who is it doing? Who, who is doing this? Government is doing this. Yes, for sir. which purpose? For whom is it? The? I don't know, sir. Th that's Because why I'm asking. Yeah, he has something to say. Uh, the government is uh, currently proposing to change the financial year from January to March because uh, 
the, the, from the taxation point of view, is it? Okay, now I am actually understanding the news article. I am, I am not really entirely convinced about with your logic. Okay, just for the invest, for okay, this is for the taxation point of view, you are saying, no? Uh, just to get the balance sheet, uh, anything for the uh, companies, I mean, most uh, of the companies that are, uh, that are in India, I mean, uh, US companies, so they follow some other accounting standards and. No, 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 no. Everybody follows that US GAAP or the. US GAAP mostly they follow. I don't, I mean, I don't see this reason, but okay, I can, I can now see what exactly he is trying to say. But this is not a reason because if you look at the year end, financial year end, Infosys has March end, even for that matter most of the US companies have March end year end. So if this is what you are talking about, I don't see a reason for that actually. I mean, and the companies choose their own year ends actually. If you look at a company called Oracle, it has like September year end. What is the logic? It's like US based company, there is no logic. There is no logic. So, I mean there must be some news article, but I am not really exactly getting what exactly the who was it for? Because for corporates, they, they, they on their own actually choose their year end. We have a March end actually. So that goes with the governments. And similarly, even most of the US companies have March end. March year end. Most of the US companies. And I track US companies. I have been tracking Accenture and stuff. Even Accenture has an odd year end. It has like February year end. So I don't see how can they make it compulsory or how can they force it on the corporates. But it must be something else actually. It must be from taxation point of view. But even for the taxation, US has the same as we have. So there has to be something else. So I'm not getting that. Anything else? I don't have an answer, frankly. Sorry. Cool. Anything else? We're good? Ask questions, guys. Not to me, but to yourself and to your peers and your to, to your professors. And do well. All the best. Thank you, cool. Thank you, sir, for your encouraging words. I'm sure the batch has learned a lot. It's time to recharge yourselves with a lunch break.